mission. God at work, faith in action. This is a program featuring stories about God's work taking place all over the world. We hope that these stories will give you a greater awareness of what God is doing and how you can be involved in it. When you're at the sink and you turn on the faucet and out of the tap comes fresh, clean water. It's what we expect. Love it. But in so many third world countries, fresh, clean water is not a reality. Malawi is among the poorest countries in Africa and has about 10 million people living in it today. Its recently established democratic government is struggling to develop its economy and social programs. Many factors lead to the poverty that exists here, and the results are often heartbreaking. People in developing countries like Malawi suffer so much more than the average Westerner realizes. Some of the most basic of human needs, like food, shelter, and adequate clothing, are often not met. Education and health care are among the major issues. There is only one doctor for every 5,000 people, and over half of the population cannot read. But the most basic of these needs is clean, safe drinking water. Here in Malawi, and in many countries all over the planet, people do not have access to safe water. This is Bob Brack having some fun in a small village in southern Malawi. He and his family have worked for years to bring physical and spiritual health to the people of Africa. Together with the support of Hope Chapel, a church in the U.S., and Malawi's Christian Service Committee, they have provided clean water for thousands of African families. Well, we've just left in Chiwa village, which is the first well that we did here in Malawi. And it was a meeting that took place in 1995 that motivated the whole well project, water project thing that we've been doing in Malawi for the last five or six years. We had had a couple years of drought, and for the first time in all my years as a missionary here, I actually had people in the village begging me and begging Foursquare to try and do something about the drinking water situation, because these people were desperate. The women were complaining. They were walking up to eight hours a day to get one bucket of water. Just think about that. And from that one bucket of water, you have to drink, you have to cook, you have to wash. You know, it's amazing what people were going through. often referred to as the warm heart of Africa. Its people seem joyful and friendly, but they are often very troubled. The average income for a man in urban areas is about a dollar a day, and women make even less. In rural areas, people are completely dependent on what they grow for their survival. Flooding and drought often threaten to destroy food that would sustain an entire village for months. <laughs> 
a sort of cornflour mush called ensima, is the staple food for most Malawians. <laughs> But people here have to be willing to eat a wide variety of things. From cassava root that fills the stomach but has little nutritional value, to mbewa, boiled mice. Uh, here in Malaya we do like uh, mbewa, which is the mice. We do use them with uh, sima, which is a staple food. I want to show you how I eat this. Uh, here is I'm opening it. It's already cooked. And uh, now I'm ready to eat it. Here, I, here you go. It's very nice. Bob's presence here in Mobaini village is always welcomed. The people here continually express their gratitude for this well through singing and dancing. In the past, there was no wells in this area. And because of the drought that we were having, the river had gone dry, so they'd have to dig into the ground deep enough to find water. And just by the nature of things, the water seeps in, they take it out. More water seeps in, they take it out. So there'd be lots of women there waiting for their chance to get water, taking hours there, taking hours to get there, hours waiting for their bucket, and then hours to go back home again. Leaving in the morning, coming back in the evening. So that means no work in the house, no gardening, no hoeing. So it was really a difficult time for them. So this well has helped them a lot to cut down their journey. But they're still saying, even now, there are uh, people from four chieftainships, four, under four chiefs in this area, that are drawing water from this well right here. So there's still a need for more wells. It's, it's pretty amazing. Water is one of the most valuable natural resources we have, but it is so often neglected and abused. All living things are dependent on water for survival. Where there is water, life abounds. When there is no clean water, people resort to drinking contaminated water. In rural areas of Africa, people have no other choice. Without safe water, these people's efforts are held hostage to their need for survival. Daily life is so filled with the struggle to survive that little else matters. Oh, 
People draw water from this river because it is the only water source close to their village. This woman is saying, we do not have safe water here. We are all suffering from waterborne diseases. Our own animals contribute to the pollution here. The whole area is affected. And there was also a train wreck upstream. We could see blood in the water, but we still had to drink it. We had no other choice. Dead bodies and dangerous bacteria are not the only things contaminating the water. This river comes from the city of Blantyre and is filled with deadly industrial chemicals. Sewage and many other pollutants infect water supplies all over Africa. Over five million people in Malawi are forced to drink from contaminated sources. Without access to abundant, safe water, thousands of people die each year. Many organizations that desire to bring health, hope, and life to Africa believe that establishing clean water sources is a good place to start. Godwin, let's take a look where we are in the map yes. so we can see what we've got here. here. What you see here is this river. We have a drift here. Mary View, it's just those houses you see. Okay, so yeah. here? No, here. Yeah, so, so it here, must be closer to... It's this place. So it's about one and a half. Yeah. So it's about two and a half kilometers to the nearest borehole. Yeah. So that means a total time of, of one and a half, to, at least, to two hours just to get one bucket of water. So the fact that they're going to have this well nearby is going to be a great help to people. Today, in a small village, hope for the future will be arriving on a truck. A team from Malawi's Christian Service Committee will be drilling for water. The people here have already been taught how to protect and maintain a new well, and they have been looking forward to this for a long time. The water in this area is extremely contaminated, but just a few hundred feet below the contaminated surface water lies enough clean water to supply all of their drinking water needs. To reach this water, specialized well boring equipment is needed. Over 70% of Malawi's population live in remote villages and could never pay for a borehole to be drilled. But with donations from many sources like Hope Chapel, Christian Service Committee has drilled hundreds of wells all over Malawi. They have been a valuable resource for Bob Brack's work here. People all over Malawi suffer with waterborne parasites. E. coli, giardia, and amoebas ravage the population. But cholera is the most dangerous disease that infects water supplies. It causes profuse vomiting and diarrhea, completely desiccating its victims. An infected person must be hospitalized immediately and given liters of IV fluids a day. It is so dangerous that it often kills within 24 hours. But small children are most vulnerable to waterborne diseases. Their small bodies dehydrate very quickly. Here in Malawi, one out of every five children will die before they are five years old. This woman has been in this hospital for several days. Her baby is suffering from diarrhea, and so far there has been no change in her daughter's condition. In most cases, it is a water contamination problem. It is very difficult for the parents of these children to remain hopeful. This particular child is so dehydrated that he will probably not survive. Diseases like malaria, tuberculosis, and AIDS are rampant in Africa. It is believed that almost one million people in Malawi have contracted HIV, and people here are becoming infected at a staggering rate. 
Promiscuity, dangerous social traditions, poverty, and a fatalistic mentality all lead to the spread of this horrible disease. Africa has many issues, but problems like contaminated water are easily preventable. Each well that is drilled will literally save the lives of hundreds of people. And in most cases, clean water can be reached in only a few hours. One cannot help but be moved by the daily struggles of these beautiful people. With help from those that are more fortunate, these lives can be permanently altered. But as long as they struggle with the most basic of needs, they will never have the opportunity to contribute meaningfully to the well-being of their own society. Although many here in Malawi are hurting and hopeless, we pray they will never be forgotten. Don't you love watching that clear, clean water come out of those pipes? I remember when we were living in Africa, I watched some people riding donkeys and camels with water skins tied underneath and found out that every third day they spent the entire day just going to get water to bring it back to where they lived. Mm, it's a reminder to be thankful every time we just turn on the faucet and get that water. For more information about the Living Water Project, here's their website and phone number. And if you don't happen to have a pencil, you can always log on to faithtelevisionnetwork.com.
this is a replica of the very plane that your dad flew when he was in Ecuador. That's right. It's a very rare Piper PA-14. Uh, we called it 5-6 Henry. You know, when dad and his friends were killed, the Waurani stripped the fabric off the wings and the fuselage, and then the plane disappeared. We thought that it had been washed down river. But in 1994, when Aunt Rachel came to the States to have cancer surgery just before she died, she told me that the Waurani had told her by radio that they had found part of the plane. So mm -hmm. I took my brother Phil and my son James down to the jungles to see what we could find with the Waurani. And amongst other things, believe it or not, we found this little plaque. It's just a little stamped piece of aluminum, mm -hmm. weighs about two ounces. And as we were walking across the beach where Dad and his friends were killed, we found the little plaque in about that much water, face up, and it still had this background paint on it. When I saw that, I knew that that hadn't just happened. It was as though God was saying, here, Steve, look, I'm going to tell this story again. And now a movie's being made about this story that'll be in theaters before too long. That is an amazing story. And we'll have more information about the movie project in future mission shows. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time on Mission. Mm -hmm.